Hey folks, Captain James Nelson here with Dude Craft Guitars. I've got a messy shop, but I've got a lot to cover, and so we're going to cover it. What I'm going to do now is show you a point where I am, but we're going to break away and show you how I got to that point. It's the age-old adage of measure twice, cut once. I'm going to go back and remeasure and measure again throughout the process. The idea here is to make a template so that it eliminates some of the measuring that has to be done later. It aids along and makes things flow a lot easier without having to stop and measure all the time. So I'm doing that now. Uh, this is the stuff we do for us guys who like to carve things ourselves. Uh, cut them, you know, either by hand and or by hand held machinery versus computer operated uh, numerical cutting and all that jazz, whatever the heck CNC stands for. All right, so let's back up here. Try to get this in the shot for you rather than staring at my ugly mug. Okay, what I've done is uh, I'm working on, it's a new model, it's the Katina. It's gonna be a multi-scale five string bass guitar. And uh, yeah, so that's what we got going on here. So why don't I get you to where we got to here where we're gonna remeasure. So go ahead and check out that footage and enjoy a little nice mellow uh, narration. Okay, so first things first, let's get this place all tidied up. Good grief, what a mess. Been uh, running a bunch of things all at once. I got a bunch of orders all at once. So you see all the neck lengths laying around. You see on the drum sander behind me, there's a template for an eight string I got coming on. Then you see the neck right here that was about ready to get frets. But I realized my fret tool was a little dull. Well, let's stop and sharpen it now before I put it away. And the reason that I'm putting things away is so that we can get onto this template here for the five string bass. So let's get some MDF going here and use a pre existing one. Well, kind of pre existing. This is from the April. That was a uh, neck through body. So that's why this thing looks so long. It was a 36 inch scale, so that is big. But uh, the reason why that looks like a big long scepter is because the April was a neck through body. Now we're going to make a neck and body for the Katina. So in that case, I'm just using this as kind of a uh, template of a template. So it's kind of reverse engineering, helping myself out here, give myself a jump start as to where I'm going to, uh, yeah, make this template. So I'm using a lot of things here. I'm using uh, both length, uh, width, the basic dimensions. The headstock is going to be different, so not going to use that other than, of course, the, the amount of material that we'll need to cut out of the blank. You can see the blank right there in front of me. That's the neck blank that I put together. It's five piece. It's mahogany with mahogany, mahogany, mahogany. But anyway, it's a, it's a big old ma mahogany double stack sandwich. Pretty yummy looking, would you say? So anyway, so here we are just tracing this out and uh, mumbling in the microphone for you, as usual. So we got all the hyper speeds, we're going to have some crossfades, all that jazz, so it's not any more boring than watching me sand. But I think this, this part is very informational, and hopefully you do too. Please leave comments, let me know what you think. Good, bad, or otherwise, hey, whatever. The interaction is always loved. Center line, I can't say it enough. Center line, center line, center line. Got to have a center line. It's so important, especially when you're bringing two pieces together. You're going to have a body, you're going to have a neck. You're going to bring them together. They better line up somewhere along the way. So that's what I'm doing. So again, everything here is all about just getting uh, symmetry going, center lines. And then here pretty soon, I am going to lay out where I think the frets might be. Now, obviously, this is not my fretboard template with the multi-scale. It's almost impossible to have a really good template. But what this is, is simply just to set up a visual so I know where things are going to be. Now, as I kind of alluded before, I like to go work in metrics when it comes to frets. Reason being is because if I'm off by half a millimeter, I could fix that on the crown of a fret or and or you won't even notice. Most of us don't. Whereas, you know, if you're off by 32nd or 64th even of an inch, that, that's, that's a bigger number to be off by. Now, right under my left hand there, you'll see a line. That's the ninth fret. Um, it's kind of a standard thing uh, between multi-scales, between the ones that I've played, the ones that I've seen. There are some that do get away from having a parallel on the ninth fret. Sometimes I'll have a parallel somewhere else, but 
I, I like it on the ninth fret, and I think most people do. It's kind of become such a standard now. So that's where I went. And it's kind of hard to tell because of the camera angle, but believe me, it is parallel to that center one. And again, just pulling the neck blank up there, making sure everything's going to groove. What's the point of making a base if you don't have a groove? So again, here I am just putting in all the, all the frets, watching them fan, just so I have an idea what we're doing here. I think I'm shooting for 24 frets, but I'm trying to see how I can make this all fit and uh, make it work for the customer well. Now you see the, the pages that I'm working off of, you see the calculations. Um, I got that from the Stu Mac website. I, there may be others out there, I don't know, uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, here we are. Slicing it down. Now you saw me put the other lines in there. Basically just kind of animating for myself. Give myself a visual reference of where the strings are going to be. And doing all that and then leading to this cut here is going to help me when I get to the next phase. And I'll go back to live action on that so you don't have to hear me mumbling into a microphone over high speed information. Yeah, yeah. And now if you saw my handy uh, work there yeah with all the all the sawing if you saw my saw saw my handy saw work anyway you'll you'll notice that what i've done is i measured off a template that i made the april which is a v-shaped uh, neck through type uh, electric bass guitar but that is not a multi-scale that one's a single scale nonetheless for whatever reason it just seems like that maybe because it was a um neck through that I didn't I didn't consider neck pocket on that one and the way it was shaped it was a 36 inch this is a 37 so, uh, anyway uh, but this is a 37 with the 34 so now I'm back to thinking about what about bridge width now most of the time uh, what you're looking for is and again I'm going back to to millimeters because they're so much easier to work with but you're looking at 16 in, uh, as your space in between here and uh, yeah, I put my calipers away. But anyway, just to do with a quick ruler here. Yeah, that's about what it is, about 15, 16 on center. And so if you're looking at 16, then that's gonna give us 80 millimeter width here. And if I look at that and I look at my, what did I think it's 49 back on the nut. If I look at that and I look at my neck, it just doesn't, something doesn't jive. So. I am stopping everything to, to remeasure before I go any further. Because you see where I've got my original drawn outer lines here. And I've got how much MDF I left. Now, I always like to like to uh, sand to the cut, work my way up to the cut rather than uh, cut right on that line anyway. And it's for this reason. Because now I can stop and I can kind of say, whoa, 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 let's take, a, take another look. Breathe and figure it out, okay? So on the multi-scale, what we've got here is we've got 940 on the long end. And again, going, going back to millimeters, it's just easier for me to uh, make a mistake by half a millimeter and be on rather than, say, a 32nd or 16th of an inch. You could be way off in that case. Okay, so it's 864. So I'm just going to write that down. So what I say, 940 by 864. All right, so I'm going to, at this point, try to get this thing about lined up here. I made some marks on the table because I can, because it's my table, dagnabbit. If I want to make marks on it, I can and I will. Okay, so we've got 940... Let's just go ahead. Where was that? I had it back here originally, I think. Okay, the trick is to keep that zero on the zero. Okay, so yeah, so this is the 940. And then I've got here, what I say? 864. Yeah, that's pretty much right on. Okay, so this is the 864. 
Now, obviously, by the time we get to a final product, it's going to be a little different. But, um, 940-864. Now, here's how I look at multi-scale guitars. A lot of people look at it as you got a multi-scale guitar, so they, they figure you've got this scale and you got that scale. When it comes to bridge piece alignments, the reason why it's called a multi-scale isn't because you've got two scales and whatever's left over in between. Those scales in between matter equally. So at this point, now I'm looking at what is this one. So if I go to the 12th fret, I've got... And this is why I put these lines here, just so I could have this kind of information. And I know, again, they're not totally accurate. Um, they're not going to be until we're totally done. So that one is at 5, or excuse me, 459. So I want 459 from the 12th fret to where this intonation is going to be. And that's going to be on this string. Now you see, here's, here's the problem I'm having. If I look at string at this, the width and the strings and where everything is, and I try to place it, and I'm trying to line it up where, where my strings are. You know, this one's going to be center. I'll figure it out exactly his length, but Okay, so I got a little gap in between those shoes, which is nice. And, but if I look at where it lines up to where I made my little space for the nut and this, it looks fine. I, and, and that's what I want. I don't want to have a string flop over and barely be on the fretboard here. That's why I don't want to carve this too narrow. Now, just because it's it right now, it is a little more narrow than say somebody else's brand. Really doesn't mean anything because this is my brand, so I can make it how I want. But how I want is I want the strings to fit on the fretboard. That's not too much to ask, is it? So even though I made these lines earlier, again, they're not going to be the final answer. But I do want to have. A point where I stop, look at it, and it looks like this isn't totally straight, and make sure that I'm not messing up at this point because that's the whole idea of making a template. So that if I can't trust the template, then it's like not even having one. I have to be able to trust the template. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm really more concerned with everything with whether or not. These shoes can fit the normal 15 to 16 millimeter distance in between. And in doing so, if I go string to, you know, from bridge to nut, is that string going to still be on the guitar? Because I want them on the fretboard. Again, I'm just going to recheck that center line. That looks pretty good. I drew a center line right here on the, on the bench. I think you can see that. And so that's where this string is which is great. I love having, that's the one thing I love about doing five strings is it's real easy. I mean, you got one right smack dab down the middle. And I drew these at 16 millimeters, but you can tell by these, uh, these all part shoes that I got, I call them shoes, they're the bridge saddles. Uh, but if I look at them, these individual saddles, I can squeeze them a little tighter, almost not quite 14 millimeters in between. What did I measure that out? Right, right about. And again, I know I should be using calipers, but you get the picture. Yeah, I can almost almost get that 14 millimeters, but I don't necessarily want them rubbing right up against each other either. I don't want to count on that. So this is the stuff that, that we do. And, you know, when we're creating a new model, a new guitar, something that not everybody has. because I'm realizing these have different uh, widths. I got them out of whack. There we go. So even though these are individual saddle pieces, I got them as a set through all parts. They, they, they were well aware of what I was doing here. And so they actually gave them to me. I don't know if you can see this 
I, I don't have a two camera system going on right now. But anyways, but these are these are different widths, so they fit the string gauges, which is really nice. So there we have it. So this is again. It should be give or take about 80 millimeters on the spacing there. If you got five times 16 or 75, if we're talking five times 15. So it, it's, it's all just a matter of just like, that's what it's all about. Again, when we're, we're talking about doing something um, as, as we go. I mean, yeah, it's, I designed it on the computer and, but I didn't, I didn't use like a CAD, I didn't set up G files for a computer to cut this for me for the CNC. I will be doing that, so I don't think I'm knocking it. I'm just saying that this is the status of where Dudecraft Guitars is right now. I, and I, in a way, I, I like it. But in another way, it does take time to sit down with calculator, pencils, rulers, uh, whether you go SAE or go uh, metric, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a matter of just making sure that you stop, get get things aligned, make sure that you're doing you're doing it right, and uh, yeah, that's part of the fun. So there's the status where I am now. Keep following along on this build. This one's going to be awesome. It's going to be swamp ash body. Uh, we've got this is the neck here. Look at that. It's a uh, mahogany and it's mahogany on mahogany with mahogany. So. Yeah, that's going to be a sweet little neck. And a uh, whole new headstock. There's a whole new design. This is a, the very first one. So, again, talk about prototyping. I think you saw uh, I got the template made for the body uh, recently. I did a whole video on, on making templates, and that was in it. So this is going to be a beauty. And this is the next one in the series to watch. So hit, click, like, and subscribe and all that jazz. And uh, Yeah, come on back and see what we got going on here. All right, thanks again for tuning in to Do Crack Guitars.